sand, one of the most annoying things to talk about in the community. There are so many brands, so many different types of sand, some of them have a lot of steps involved. Ugh, such a drag. So today I'm going to make a video on children's play sand, the cheapest and not the easiest option but definitely the cheapest and most convenient option in terms of cost and availability children's play sand and how we make it appropriate for hamsters so children's play sand usually comes in a big old bag like this i'm not gonna hold that for so long um here i have the chad valley 15 kilogram play sand i got this from argos which is a store in the uk where you can get pretty much everything in the whole world um, and that 15 kilogram bag that is making me breathless was five pounds so really really cheap um, just remember that there's not as much in terms of weight in that as you think because once the sand is dried it's going to be a lot lighter so the pull factor of children's play sand is it's so cheap it comes in really big bags um, which is great for hamsters that are pee trained to go in their sand bath because you will go through a lot of sand if, like mine, your hamsters pee in their sand bath. It's a really great consistency so it's not too dusty, um, it doesn't usually contain big rocks and if it does you can sift those out. But it's really accessible for a lot of people, it's really cheap, it comes in big bags and it's great and easy to use, it's not too hard to prepare and sanitise. Okay, so we are in the kitchen, you're going to want to get yourself a nice clean side and then we're going to grab some roasting dishes which are currently in the oven, so I'm going to go grab those. Okay, so as you can see I've grabbed two big fat roasting dishes, you want something quite deep like this otherwise you're not going to be baking a decent amount of sand at all really if you just use sort of a baking tray or anything like that. So while we're doing this, we're gonna to wanna to be preheating the oven. I've got the oven on over there at 180 degrees, but you can put it warmer or cooler, whatever you want. Um, it will just obviously adjust the cooking time. Okay, so now I've got some kitchen foil. I've just got a roll of 10 meters here. We just use this at home for roasting and things like that. So I'm gonna to want to put that in the roasting tray to stop any of the sand actually coming in contact with the dish because otherwise we're going to have sand all over it, it's going to get in all these sort of corner nooks and crannies and it's not going to come out and the next meal you get is going to be quite crunchy so we're going to want to line these with I would say a couple of layers of this because when you're stirring it halfway in between you can sometimes go through a layer of foil accidentally and you don't want to do that, I learnt it the hard way and so I like to put a good couple of layers on now. Oh my god! <laughs> I've just cut myself on the foil along the edge of it. Wow, okay, hold on. Before I put plaster on this, watch out because this just cut real deep. Uh, gross. Okay, so I don't have a plaster, so <laughs> I just put some tape over my finger and now I'm going to carry on. Carefully, I'm trying not to cut myself this time. Line this with the foil. So, yeah, dude, that hurt. Anyway, I'm going to do that with my other roasting dish and then I will be back. Okay, dude, so I just re bandaged myself. Still don't have a plaster, but anyway, now we're going to fill the roasting dish with our sand. I'm going to try and do this without um, getting my big finger gash out. Um, but the way I like to do this is not by tipping it because you literally can't and it comes out in massive big chunks. So I take a plastic jug, pop that in there and pop it in. Okay, so now these are both into the oven. At the 10 minute mark, we're just going to stir it and disturb it and I will talk to you when we're at the 10 minute mark. Okay, so we're pretty well at the 10 minute mark now, so I'm going to give them a stir. Okay, 
Okay, so we've just hit the 20 minute mark. I've just turned the oven off and I'm about to get the sand out, but you just want to put it in a safe place and leave it to cool. You don't want to leave it anywhere where the heat from the trays could damage um, the surface that you've popped it on. So just pop it somewhere safe, something metal, something marble, something like that. Okay, so now the sand is out. As we can see, I'm not going to touch it too much because it's very hot at the minute. Um, you can just leave it by a window or something and open up the window or you can just leave it to cool. It generally doesn't take too long, but you want to make sure it's 100% cool before you even think about giving this to your hamsters. Hey guys, so sorry for the slight change of location and the very obvious change of clothes. It's a totally different day. I forgot to film an outro for that, but basically once the sand has cooled, you can pop it straight into your hamster's enclosure. So you can put it in a dish, a bowl, anything like that or you can just section off part of your hamster's cage with a bendy bridge or something like that. I do use bendy bridges because um, I like my sand baths to be quite deep and also both of my hamsters use it as a toilet so I like them to have a toilet corner but then still have a decent amount of sand to bathe in without bathing in their own pee. But you can do it however you like, just make sure it's completely cool before you pop it in. I hope this video has been helpful to you and I will see you later.